Okay, for this tutorial, I'm going to try and make a couple scrub caps and a mask. Um, it's not very professional. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants today. I'm going to try to make one with this pattern over here that I've made. Um, there's several on the internet, and as I've worn them at work, I've just come, you know, kind of tweaked it to where I like this one, the fit the best, and it seems to fit other people pretty well. I've had men and women both tell me that they like it. Um, I'm going to try to make one with the ties over here instead of the ties that are attached to the hat. So that way you could use ribbon or laces or anything you might have. So I think I have everything out here that I'm going to need to use. I've got my ruler. I've got other rulers. I'll be using pins or clips, um, scissors and rotary cutters, um, and of course your sewing machine. All right, let's get started. All right, so we're going to try with a smaller piece of fabric and we're going to try using my old template or pattern piece to make a different kind of hat. I'm going to try a different kind of closure. Instead of putting the ties on the end, I'm going to try a ribbon um, or another tie of some sort. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the fold and I'm just going to cut down to the end. And then I'll also do the top of the hat on the fold. All right. Then once I'm done with that, I think I'll have enough to go ahead and fold this scrap over. We'll see. And again, since I don't have the fancy tripod or anything, I can't show you. But I do have this rotary cutter that I love so very much. Um, and then I also have my scissors and I use them both. I have several pairs of scissors. Um, be careful, of course, with your fabric scissors. Don't use them on paper. Uh, same with your rotary cutters. I had a pair that I used with scrapbooking and it's fine for cutting paper, but it really was way too dull to cut through fabric. So I got a second set for fabric. And voila, all cut. I'm sharing my cutting area with the cat. That's right. I have this little shelf that my husband built me over my bathtub and uh, use it kind of as a multi-purpose ledge, so. There she is. I need to try to convince her to move so she doesn't get her tail hurt. Um, looks like there's plenty of fabric left over. I just cut the areas that it was joined so that I can get two layers. And I'll fold this in half and I'll cut these because this is actually, this is just half of the front, right? But since the front and the back are the same shape, we're just going to cut two so it'll be four layers in total so now we're going to the ironing board first thing you can tell is i'm kind of messy um but we're going to start ironing out i have a couple other hats i'm working on so we're going to start ironing out the project i think i'll have to fold it in so that when i sew it up it'll leave a clean opening and then i can attach the ribbons and sew that shut all right, so I've got my fabric under here. I'm going to try to do a quarter of an inch. Like I said, I don't think I can do this one-handed. And I know it's not straight right now, but you can see I'm able to line up that edge of my fabric with the quarter inch mark. So I can watch it all up here to make sure that it's a quarter inch the whole way. And then I just keep measuring. So as I'm ironing my seam, I'm checking down here to make sure it's still a quarter inch and lined up. And then once I'm done, I can just go back again and double check. 
It's about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, it's turned a little bit. I can fix that. All right, so now I've got my pattern piece that I've been working off of, and I'm measuring. It looks like I put... Was I one and a quarter? So here we are. We've gone up a quarter inch. So I'm gonna fold up here at one and a quarter. If you're just not sure, one thing I can do is line up my ruler at one and a quarter and use this friction pen. This actually disappears with heat. I've just got this one at Walmart. Um, and sometimes it leaves a little yellow mark behind. So, you know, if it's a piece of fabric that's real good, you don't want to have any marks on, you know, do something different. Um, but if I'm doing this on the inside of something like this, it's not a problem for me. So I'll just draw a line where I'm going to fold. So you can see the line's gone. So now I'm just going to go and stitch along towards the top because I don't want it to fold down a whole bunch. I'm going to catch this quarter inch that I tucked under. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to put in here for ties. I have some ribbon, I think, somewhere. And then we'll show you the next step. So I'm kind of glittery. But um, this is where I work. I've got my sewing machine and my serger. Um, the serger I'm going to use to finish the inside of the hat. Um, but I'll be using the sewing machine most of the time. And I'm just trying to use the outside of my purple foot as a guide. I'm just going to come off the fabric. And you can see that I've got a nice little channel here. And my ends are tucked under so they're not going to fray. I'll just go ahead and... see if I have a coordinating ribbon. All right, I do not have much. I have some thick ribbon. We got this for a Halloween costume one year. It's very, I don't know, it's kind of papery almost to me. I know it's not paper, but. And then I've got some little thin bits um, and some twill tape. And I think this might win out It'll kind of go with our blue fabric. Let's see if I can get that open. I don't know if you can tell. Oh, this is this is a bias tape actually, um, but it is a uh, navy color. So I think that's what I'm going to try to use. So the ties on my hats that I've been making are a little over seven inches long. So I'm going to use about that much on these other caps. So I'll cut maybe 14 and a half inches of the bias tape or ribbon, whatever you're choosing to use, uh, and then just cut it in half. Of course, and I forgot this, so mine's going to be a tiny bit smaller, but you do need to uh, fold in your raw edge on ribbon. Maybe it's not such a big deal. Um, but I'm gonna fold in my raw edge and just sew it so that it won't unravel on me. Okay, so a couple things. Um, I have this product that I like. 
called Steam Theme. Um, there's lots of other types out there, I'm sure. It's, you know, to seal your seams. Um, I am going to wash these hats. I wash them every day after work. So I want to sew also. But I just want to put a little bit of this um, in the inside of the bias tape. I'm just going to give it a quick, um, just a tiny bit, just to tack it down and fold it over. I'm going to undo it, fold it over, and then sew it back. And that way my end won't unravel when I wash it. So you can see this one's already done. And I'll show you how I did it. I'm sure this would be so much easier if you have ribbon or something. Um, I just don't have any right now. So I'm gonna make do with what I've got. So I'll open this up. This would be a lot easier with two hands. Put the little piece of tape here and kind of press it down. When it's stuck down, the ends will start to peel up. You see the end just starts to peel up and that'll expose the other sticky side. And the nice thing is these are about a quarter inch wide, I believe. So that'll kind of make your quarter inch seam and you just fold it over. Like I said, I only used a little bit. Uh, just trying to tack it and then I'm going to use the iron and do the rest. Okay, so I ended up cutting um, about 14 and a half inches. Um, you cut a little more than that if you want. It just depends on what you want your ties to be. Uh, I'm not going to go into how I finish the ends because the intent of this was to use ribbon and you wouldn't have to finish the ends of your ribbon. Um, so suffice it to say, I think using the bias tape made it harder than it was intended. Um, either way, uh, if you're trying to make this all out of one fat quarter, you know, you can just put the ends in and kind of sew them up. Or you can use ribbon, ties, or anything else that you can imagine. And I'm just gonna put it into the, the end of my little channel that I made here and sew it up. Okay, well, I've been having some trouble for some reason my machine didn't wanna feed my fabric, but I did go ahead and attach these. Um, I just went ahead and did two seams to try to make sure it holds real All well. All right, with the top of the hat, one thing we're going to do before we sew is we're just going to do the end here. Um, we're going to fold it and fold it and sew. And if you choose, you know, you can make a little channel here, make it a little wider if you want, and run a piece of elastic. Oh, maybe about that long. You just sew it at the end and then pull it through and sew it again, and that'll give it just a little more gather to it. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use this piece of, just because it's kind of a stronger one than the thinner elastic. So I wanna make sure my channel is thick enough, you know, wide enough, rather for that to fit through. So that looks good. Okay, I'm just gonna make a little channel here for the elastic.
All right, so I've got my elastic on this little elastic threader device here, and I'm just gonna pull through. And when I get to the end, before I pull it through the whole way, I'm gonna, see it's there. I'm just gonna sew the end shut with the elastic. I'm kind of sandwiched in between just to hold the elastic where it is. You see my fabric is it's an older fabric and it's fraying. So I'm just gonna well, work with what you got. And the fabric is fraying and that's okay because when we do the hat we're gonna cover all this up. So we're gonna come out bring Bunch up our fabric so you see and it's going to stretch it'll give us a little stretch it's going to help with um you know keeping any kind of ponytail in or um you know giving it a little just a little extra grip so i'm going to come out here and i usually like to put a little pin so that it doesn't pull back into the hat and i'm going to just give it a quick seam down there. Alright, so I went ahead and did that. I'm just gonna kind of trim some of this frayed edge. But like I said, once I finish the hat, it's gonna it's gonna all go into the seam. There you go. So we're back at the ironing board. I just took my hat, folded it in half, gave it a quick press so that we know where the center is. Gave this one a, another press so that the wrong side is out. That way I can real quickly tell my right sides are together and I know where my center is. Then I'm gonna put a pin in the middle and start pinning to the top of the hat. All right, here it is, all pinned. And we're ready to go back to the machine. Um, I think with this, it's a little longer than I wanted it. So I'm just gonna fold it one more time and start sewing it with the rest of the seam. All right, see you back over there. All right, let's see if this works. And I'm just gonna come up here and follow my edges using about a quarter. Yeah, my hair's probably, everybody's probably watching this. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. like they're even this is the back of the hat all right the only thing left to do is and you can do it with a zigzag or overlock stitch on your machine I'm gonna use my serger but first I have to re-thread it so I don't want to use black on this light blue fabric. Uh, I have some light blue color and I have some white, so I'll probably use one or both of those. 
Okay, so as you can see, I searched the seams. It took care of the fraying and it took care of the edge of the elastic that you could see. Um, I'll finish the ends here in just a minute. Um, I just want to show you the, the opposite side. Here is the finished scrub cap. You can tie it in the back. It has a little bit of elastic on it. already. Now I pre-washed this fabric um, but I'll go ahead and wash it again just because you know I'm gonna give it to somebody at work and uh, you know I just feel like that's kind of a nice thing to do. I'll go ahead and finish up the other scrub cap with the the same color ties uh, and show you that one. Okay, we're back. Uh, the second hat is going a lot quicker and I think the reason is that I'm more familiar with this. Um, I didn't have to do anything, you know, to the straps except to fold them over and sew them. And I sewed across all the way, ooh, sorry, all the way around the brown. And then I pinned the, the top, just like I uh, showed before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing. So, sorry for the shake. And I wanted to show, I start sewing on these and line up my seam for the top of the hat with this seam that I made on the side. So that's where I'm going to make sure I place my needle. That way it all kind of blends in. Okay, so I finished this hat. Unfortunately, I had a grave error with my serger and cut one of the ties. So I altered it. So lucky I learned how to do that thing and I've got to get rid of those ends. But... I created some ties there. So now that hat, otherwise, you know, the whole hat would have been ruined. Um, but I did have a third hat just so you can see how the ties look when they're done. And you can see it just, um, they come down together. I, like I said, I try to join those seams so that it looks like it matches up a little more. And then I serge the inside seam so that it doesn't fray through frequent washings. So there you go. Um, three hats so that my friends at work will have some choices and um then i'll make a mask for you on another video bye, -bye.